I'm Ryan. This is my brother Daniel. This is Rolls in the Family. And you know, we like big, heavy strategy games, but sometimes we got to bring the party. Sometimes we got to party, Ryan. You know, sometimes we got to party. You know, we're big believers in having a board game collection that can cover any possible scenario. Any. Any scenario, you'd be surprised the games we have in our <laughs> we collection. Have some very, very weird uh, games. But in our collection. <laughs> party games are one of the biggest, like most important ones, honestly, because there's just a it's lot true. of situations where you have a bigger group or people that don't play games as much, and it's your opportunity to come in there and deliver the right, you know, game for the situation. Um, I feel like party games, you know, different people might define them a little differently. I think for us, it, it's like a couple criteria. It's like Higher player count, so I'd say like minimum six. Usually, we're getting into like Mm -hmm. party game territory. Yeah. Um. Usually, much more of an emphasis on like social gameplay than strategic gameplay. Yeah. Um. And so, like, there's examples of games that we left off. Um. Like uh, cartographers, for example, can play a lot of people. I can play. I've played it with like twelve people. I don't consider it a party game. It's really a strategy roll and write that happens to work with a bigger group and could work in that setting but it's not really what we think i I would say it's kind of yeah what is my main focus is it is my main focus on winning or losing or is the main thing i'm trying to get out of it the just like group laughing yeah no a lot of times laughter like you said goes with it it's just it's just creating this like you know energy around the table where the focus is really on kind of the social aspects of the group um I think all of my, the ones on my list fit those criteria. Now that I've uh, <laughs> yeah, locked them in, is how lie about yeah, we, we, we determine the criteria <laughs> after we pick our list. That's right. <laughs> um, we would love to hear any party games that you particularly enjoy. I mean, we really do every year usually pick know. up new party games. Um, so yeah. always up for trying new ones and That's finding a category some more. We are always scanning. Yeah, heavily. and willing to have quite a few in my, you know, our yeah. collections, just because it's nice to have it some is. variety there. Yeah. Um, we will also include links to all of our picks below if we you want to check them out. Highly recommend nice. checking them out because, like we said, it's a good, it's a good part Man. of your collection to fill out so that it's you're ready. what you need. You really do because it's the most just like versatile of of people who haven't played and any you board games. Be, you can bring them. You don't want to like be that guy that. You know, you're in that situation and you're trying to pull out a game that is not <laughs> have you heard not of meant TI4? for that, heavier than it should be. Um, so yes, <laughs> TI4 it's good is to my party. Get game. people to trust you with your game selection. Yep. But we got 20 games. I anticipate we'll have a decent amount of overlap here. Um, but 20 games to jump through. Oh, jump so we better through. get going. Okay, here we go. Uh, starting with my number 10 uh, is going to go to a game that. Uh, there are this is kind of in a uh style of games that we might see some repetition of on our list. So I'm just gonna kick it off right here with Dixit. Uh this is um I think for us this was obviously the first of these style of games where you're uh using these I don't know, we just say abstract, Im- just weird artistic yeah, images of the, you have these cards. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a very unique style. Um, but Dixon was really the first one that we were we were introduced to. It actually whole- was the first one in the world. I mean, not even just to us. Like it really was the game that uh, invented my statement's it. still true. Yes, uh, <laughs> just clarifying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, so the whole premise around you know um, on someone's turn, you know, everyone's got these hand of hand of these cards, and and when you're the clue giver, you uh, pick one from your hand, you give a clue, and what's kind of fun is you can you can literally do anything. You can say something you can make a noise you can you can really be as creative as you want to be and you put it in and then everyone else is going to pick a card from their hand stick it in as well um and then you're going to display the cards and everyone else is trying to guess which one was the the clue givers card you get points if other people uh you know pick yours and kind of the whole tension the clue giver is in is you want at least one person to guess your card but not everyone so you don't want no one you don't want everyone so you're trying to give a clue that's kind of in the middle there sometimes kind of challenging to, yeah. to do that sometimes and and that can i don't know maybe that's why it's not higher for me is is sometimes it doesn't feel great when you give a clue and either no one gets it or everyone gets it um but that just whole experience around um looking at cards and and then you kind of get into the mind of the other the clue giver right like what would the what would the clue giver 
think be thinking and which of my cards would uh would fit well with that so yeah that was the one that really kicked off these the style of games that uh, again i think you'll see we tend to enjoy these i know your wife Mm -hmm. this is like her favorite type of yeah you know thing in a game uh being an artist uh so uh there's so gotta be some cool. correlation you know, I don't know. there's maybe some correlation uh but anyways yeah it's just been an uh an absolute hit for us so that's gonna be coming in at my number 10 dixit and we having the getting the odyssey i'll just add on there lets it go up to 12 players yeah which i don't know if that edition is still sold which is oh, kind is of a crime not? oh I my think gosh the new edition of dixit actually goes to eight which is better okay. than it was always yeah, a shame and, that it went to six. And you don't so often play with more than eight. But we like having but we that do option. Like to having go that up. option. Yeah, so, so that is too bad. So that is my number ten. Yeah, Dixit really broke open a whole new world of like that mechanism of cards yeah. that can be interpreted in a lot of different ways or what you might notice in it and using that to drive a game works really yeah. well. Awesome. Uh, my number ten is a game. It's actually a. I like include it only if we're playing it a certain way. Um, I don't know. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Only if we're having a lot of fun. No. Uh, I'll explain myself. Uh, okay. This is Telestrations. And so Telestrations oh, okay. is a game that this can create some of the most funny moments yeah. of any game you'll play. Because it's telephone, telephone with pictures where you're drawing and then guessing and then drawing and then guessing and you're watching how it drifts away from you know what the original clue is. However, what's weird about this game is if you're by Telestrations and you just play by the rules, this would not make my top 10. Because... I don't even know the rules. Well... I'm not even saying like including the scoring, but just the fact that most of the cards in the game are really simple clues. It's like turtle. It's like I draw a turtle and, and they technically the way they score it is they incentivize keeping it the same, like getting it right. So the game's incentive is actually the opposite of what makes the game the most fun, which is when it gets off the rails. (laughs) Um, And so the way we usually play it is we always say to people, Hey, Your card is maybe like a prompt and an idea, but don't be afraid to like tweak it and make it a little weird or like, oh, turtle. How about a turtle winning a surfing championship? Because suddenly with that prompt, like it becomes way more fun because the pictures get so much more involved. And then when you're guessing, not necessarily even guessing like what do I think this person was drawing, but just be like, what do I think this picture is? What do is? I see? <laughs> what do I see? And then that sets up the next person yeah. to have to draw something. And so I think if you embrace that, yeah, you know, mindset with the game, oh my gosh, can this game just <laughs> be so like funny. hurting yourself? Yeah, you're like crying, laughing. laughing. Yeah. Um, and so yeah, I don't. I, it probably would maybe even be higher for me if the game itself. Pushed yeah, it more in that direction. Kind of, we have to twist it to, to yeah, get it kind and of like what sometimes people like have trouble be, feeling creative and yeah. like they just go with the thing or whatever. But I and and I guess I should specifically call it. We recommend the twelve player party pack. Party pack because the original goes to eight players, which is fine. But this is a game that's better the more players you have because you get more yeah. times around the table that it, just it can gets drift. Crazier and crazier. So you you want that 12 player pack so that you have that option. Totally. But I have to say the illustrations, I mean it is in my top hardest laughing during a game. This yeah. is one of the games that has provided those moments. Yeah. Yeah, it is so funny that the you know the way you were saying with the rules cuz the worst situation in illustrations is like cat and yep. Yeah. Cat. 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 And then you get to and the then, end and everybody's like Yay. Yay! We, we, we did, did it. it, and you realize uh, we did it, but we also didn't do it because we didn't have any fun going through it. Yeah. So, yeah, that's th- that twist definitely um, helps that. Also, game a great game for people that are terrible at drawing because that oh, also you need people. Adds to, yeah, if you know well, someone, who's and I will say, terrible at drawing and also really good with drawing. We have a few people. My wife, our older brother, are oh, really yeah, they, good at like they, these. They, and so what's funny is when we get really off the rails, <laughs> we, we feed them prompts that are just yeah, like, like I try to draw this, this one. <laughs> and then they come up with these really, yeah. you know, elaborate, uh, good looking drawings. So uh, that's very good. fun. Very fun. Okay. Moving on to my number nine. Uh, this is, uh, again, I would say um, been kind of a staple in our party collection. One of the 
oftentimes uh, first party games would kind of look to for playing with people. And this is going to go to just one. Um, and I was as I was thinking about this, Ryan, how many players does just one? Although yeah, it's funny you yeah, yeah, ask yeah. that because technically the box says seven. The box says seven, which is uh, ludicrous because it should say eight because you're always the person who is guessing. Yeah, don't doesn't let need those a marketing people lie to you. You can play just one with eight people. Yeah, it's like a, it's actually like a huge mistake. I don't know why yeah. they. But anyways, yeah, off digress. the rails, off the rails. Uh, just one. So the game where uh, you know, as the uh, clue giver, you flip up a card away from you, and you you know uh, say a number to pick one of the words on the card, and everybody else is looking at that word, and then on their little uh, with a marker, they're writing a clue for that word. Just uh, one word. This is uh, easiest yeah. game to teach. We we'll yeah. rank game if we rank games, easiest games to teach. <laughs> this one is up there. Um, but anyways, so then uh, the the guesser closes their eyes and everyone else reveals. And the whole kind of twist is that anyone who wrote the same word cancels, has to erase it and take it away. And so then the only clues that are visible are the unique one, the ones that were only appeared once. And then the clue giver opens their eyes and has to make a guess um, for, for it. And I think the reason it works so well, one, I, I think you'll see a general uh, theme that Ryan and I really love cooperative party games. Um, it just goes over really well. Um, everyone kind of being on the same team helps the teaching too. Um, but yeah, th- this one, I think it- it's got the fun thing of, oh my gosh, you put, the- how did you put the same thing as me? Or, yeah. you know, kind of those moments. It's always that you're trying to get in the mind of like, do I go with the obvious clue or, but then nobody does the obvious clue. Mm-hmm. And then we make, and, and then it-, it can be really funny when a bunch of people cancel and the two words that are left you're just like, there's no way there's this person's no going to get this. And, and that's funny. I think again, the, maybe a, there's a couple of things keeping it from being a little higher. Um, I personally want to just completely house rule out the passing option as the clue. Yeah, giver. We've talked about that. And I think I've come around with it. I think I agree. Just because force them to guess it, 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 I mean, a little bit like, uh, like we were talking about, you know, um, with telestrations, but like it, it goes completely against the fun of the game which is guessing and trying to figure it out. And, and so the fact that you even have that option, I don't know, it just feels and some so... some people are going to be more likely to want to take that option. Yeah, I would rather... And like, I, you made the yeah. good point when I remember when we reviewed it that it takes away the possibility of a really amazing moment where right. with very little information, you happen to get it right. Right. And because of the way they put in that, that option, you never even try. For well, and that. I think, again, it gets to that problem where for us in party games, we're looking for experiences where that's a rule that is focusing more on score and doing well. Yeah. Right. And so I just think take that out. But other than that, man, is, this one really is just delivers um, with a wide range of people. I mean, this yeah. really can go over well with just about anyone. Only thing to be cautious of is if people there is the when you're the guests are being put on the spot to guess in that moment. Some people don't yeah. love that, but overall it's gone really well with, with our group. So, yeah, I think this is a great example of the difference between this being a list of my favorite party games versus the party games I would most recommend mm-hmm. like to somebody. Cause most recommend just ones in my like top three, yeah. five or something like it is one of the first ones I would recommend. It actually landed at 12 for me. So yeah. just missed my list. I can see that. And that's yeah. really just, I've played it a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, but right. yeah, it's if you don't, it it's one of those games that feels like you got to have it. Like it's yeah, so it's easy to get to the table. A, it's yeah. good for so many situations. Totally. There's like no reason not to have it. There you in go. our opinion, uh, my number nine is a crossover. We already have a crossover. Already? Look at that! Oh my gosh, Ryan, Dixit. 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 <laughs> Dixit. Yes, you know, Daniel touched on a lot of it. I, obviously, my wife loves Dixit, so that <laughs> helps. That like, there's a lot of situations help. where I I get to play it. Yeah, you get to play a lot um, but, more than me, probably. Yeah, it just and I, I mentioned that just that basic thing of how different people look at the same images and trying to get in somebody's head of what which of these would they have actually thought of that clue mm-hmm. for is just really fun. The the I mean, we have tons of expansions for it, and it just like adds so much variety. And I just appreciate the artwork. It's just fun to draw new cards and look at these cards and see yeah. them. Um, 
We'll see. I'm sure, I'm quite sure we're going to be talking about some more Dixit-like games on this list. Did you look at my list? Um, I did, yep. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Unbelievable. And, uh, no, I did. I, I know I didn't because you just made it like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> oh, uh-huh. wow, outed. Ryan. Wow, outed. you're just going to out me like that? That is yes, unbelievable. no mercy. I'm going to mute Fatality. you during editing. Nobody's hearing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Block me out. They'll just think I'm going on a yes, rant. I'm going to censor your mouth. <laughs> yeah. Man. Okay. Yes, I don't think I have a lot to add. Dixit, great game. One that's been a staple since I got it back in 2009 or so. Like oh, pretty much gosh, when it yeah. came out. That was out. a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and there's been a lot that have kind of built on that formula since then but still the og classic it's making great. my list it's great okay coming over to my number eight this is a uh, one of the most uh it's up there in most recent uh additions uh into my collection um and uh i've only been able to play it a few times but again really leans into the trying to deliver just a funny uh, I mean, the whole premise of the game is just watching people uh, do funny things or say, talk in funny ways. And that's going to go to poetry for Neanderthals. Wow. Um, yeah. I, uh, it's funny. The first time the first. So, so this one you're in the game, you're uh, it's it's you're trying to. Uh, get your and I'm and I'm trying to remember here if you you split into you're just in two teams, two teams and so yeah. uh, and you're trying to get your team to. I uh, guess, um, you know, uh, a word here uh, again, every party game, I feel like, like, what's the twist? You know, what's what's the yeah. thing that makes it fun? And so for this one, it's you have to talk like a Neanderthal, meaning you can only speak in one syllable words. Um, and they're literally the person sitting next to you has this inflatable bat like or, uh, uh, cl- you know, whatever. A Neanderthal holds a little club yeah, yeah. and they hit you on the head if you ever the don't no say one. So, sil- Yeah. And say no, and you have to pass, you know, you have to get rid of that word if you ever do that. Speaking in only one syllables is actually very challenging. Like, mm-hmm. it's when you first read the rules of the game, you're like, oh, yeah, this, like, this, this will not be that hard. Very, you have to really think, but it's really what's fun is when people kind of figure it out and can get into like talking, you know, comfortable talking kind of faster. Because you do sound hilarious as yeah. you're giving clues. And I, I mean, it's so the fact that the game does just deliver watching that is is really funny. Another kind of, I think, cool thing in the game is the whole part where uh, I think every card, you know, you've got is I think it's like one and is it one and three points maybe. But like there's the the first. Yeah, so it'd cl- be like fly is the clue. But if you want to keep going for the harder one, it's fly swatter or something. Yeah, it's always a build on of the previous one which i think is really well done and kind of can give you you know you can either be like oh no there's no way we're getting to that next one and just just you know go to the next card or you can your team knows okay it's going to be kind of a build on of the what we've gotten already uh to try to go for the harder one um so i've had uh the time a few times i've played it just a lot of laughs in it uh we like games that you know kind of the the group giving clues stuff like that um and and so this one i think uh, has done really well and uh that's why it's uh still here in my collection and i want to say you you got I this do one, have right it. yeah okay it missed my list and i think the only reason it missed my list is it's kind of a hard one to get to the table in that some people already don't like like the pressure giving clues type of games and this is like hey do that with a really hard restriction that's more likely to make you look you know silly (laughs) yes you have to be okay with looking (laughs) ridiculous and yeah so with the right group i do really enjoy this one um it's what i want to play more i've only played it a couple times yeah yeah nice um my number eight falls into a category of games like some of these party games where it's like, we literally don't score or do any of their suggested scoring. We, and we just <laughs> literally play until we feel like we're done playing. It's, it's, it's much closer to an activity than, than a game. <laughs> um, but it is one similar to telestrations that okay. the ceiling for how hard you can laugh during this game is really, really high. And this is ransom notes. Mm. And this is a game that another thing I like about it is it's very creative. It gives, you know, some games kind of prepackage their jokes. The mm-hmm. most popular one being Cards Against Humanity, which I am not a oh, fan of don't like, get, at don't all. Don't get Ryan started. <laughs> um, 
Whereas this, it's like you get the opportunity to come up with, you know, the punchline. So, so the game is, has tons of these, uh, those like word magnets that you would see on fridges. So just tons mm-hmm. of them. Everybody gets a bunch and displays them out in front of them. And then there's some prompt of like, you know, what are you going to tell the aliens that just arrived on earth or like explain this, you know, explain how this thing works or something like that. And you have to come up with an answer, but you can only use the words that are in front of you, the word magnets. Mm -hmm. And so it ends up being kind of like broken English. And you, you sometimes have to go around a different way to say, and you're like, I want to somehow say (laughs) sun, but I got to say like, yellow fire sphere or something because that's all i have to work with and so um everybody's just kind of working on that once everybody's ready we just go around and share what we have the game would have you like then have someone vote on a winner but we just don't care it's just funny to laugh at them yeah um and man this is just the combination of just hilarity of very funny answers and everybody laughing with the when it's really funny, it's because someone did a really good job and was creative. Mm-hmm. And we have some people, especially in oh our family, gosh. that our are older really brother, good at this. Our older yeah. brother. This, is, this um, might be his best board game. He it might be his favorite game. He yeah, is I don't know. dominant at this one. Um, but yeah, just really creative and yeah. funny ways to put things together. You can kind of like, when you're reading it, control how you're phrasing it to, yeah. to make it funnier. Um, mm-hmm. Just honestly, my biggest complaint with this game is the the people that made it went the route of making it a 17 plus game and the game does include magnets and prompts that are definitely like more mature or inappropriate yeah and i know why they did it because everybody's trying to be the next cards against humanity and blow up and become rich but i really wish they had released just a family ransom notes and then done the not Addition, safe for like, work yeah. expansion for those because well, it is you don't a small be, percentage but you don't want to be that person walking in buying the, hey, the inter- yeah, those people yeah. got to embrace that if that's the <laughs> kind of games they want to be playing but it's a shame because I want to recommend this game to people yeah. but I always have to tell them hey before you play it go through remove any just look through the prompts and remove any that you're like yeah that's not gonna because you don't want to be surprised you know you're playing with mom and dad and grandpa yeah. and you draw some prompt and you're like uh oh why um, did ryan recommend this yeah uh but if you just take out like the 10 percent of that suddenly you've got a family game that i highly recommend yeah of just and actually they've released an expansion now that the original game only went had six of the boards that we would I, I have one memory of you playing on a spatula because we I wanted did, to play I with more than six players yeah so we had a metal Gosh, spatula. i wish we would have taken a picture of that uh but i have the uh expansion now which i think now it goes has up to 10 which is really mm-hmm. nice so you can have lots of people playing uh so yeah if you like creative games that get everybody laughing yeah uh highly recommend ransom notes Nice. Didn't make my list, although I've I have had fun with it. I think for me, uh, I it's it's a game I enjoy playing occasionally, and that occasion is when I'm with you. Um, yeah. A little too loose, uh, I, or I don't know. Maybe it's just so group dependent, and so for me, the group is when yeah. I'm when I'm with us. But definitely, I've had some hel- again. Uh, you talk about telestrations, us laughing hard. Yeah, this one. Gosh, we have had like tears streaming down yeah, yeah. as if you, but but very group dependent. So you need that need the people who like that creativity. Um. Okay, Ryan, we're just gonna keep pressing on here. My number seven, kind of surprised actually. You might be t- well, maybe not. Um, I don't own this one. Technically, you don't either. You sick freak. Um, and this is gonna go to Onira Knots. <laughs> uh, I functionally own it. You functionally own it. Um, yes. So I was just thinking about. So I've only played Onira Knots. I don't know a couple times. Like it was yeah. our it was our family vacation that I got to try it. I realized immediately I love this. Like this is this is so great. One um, leans into the cooperative element. So uh, a little background on Ironauts uh, uses the same cards that are used in the Dixit system and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it's another game in that kind of world. Um, but difference is, is that it's a cooperative game. And and in this one, you are you there reveal is, a word. Yeah. So like a, you flip a card that has a word. Right. And so everyone has their hand of cards and is picking a card that they think fits well for that word. So again, in, in some ways, you know, you're doing a similar exercise as like a Dixit, right? You're trying mm-hmm. to think of the thing that that matches. So everyone puts it in, but then a random card 
from the deck gets put in as well. You shuffle it all up and display them all. And then you are uh, secretly voting, correct, on what which yeah, one. Yeah, everybody reveals at the same time. Yeah, yeah, on which one you think was the random one added. And it seems, it's one of those things I feel like when this game got released and you read it, you're kind of like, oh, is that even worth owning if you own, like, it, is it, does yeah. it overlap too much? I think it is a very different experience. Uh, one, obviously, just from the cooperative element, but also looking for the one that doesn't fit is a yeah it's that is a very different way of thinking mm -hmm. than looking for the one that was the best of yeah. the clues like you do in dixit and i i don't know it just it works so well and it's so fun as a group to to all be kind of you know you're trying to work together to to you know because it's just majority vote right on uh um, I think you score based on or how many people oh, are you, right. It's scoring. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and then you um, have to like get to a certain score yeah. in a certain number of rounds. As you can tell, I've only played this a couple times. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> all you Anironauts uh, masters out there, don't judge me. Yeah, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, that man, that twist, it, it just is fantastic. So and it, simple. It, like it's so, it was, I remember in our vacation, like really easy to teach. It just went over so great with the group and it avoided those few things that I didn't like in Dixit of either having to come up with a clue yourself. That's taken care of. It's just the mm -hmm. word. Um, being put on the, like that pressure of you know, with the clue giver of either everyone, you know, trying to find the middle, like some people don't like that that's gone and so it just delivers the it's like it takes dixit almost and kind of turns it into a cooperative game and delivers everything i loved about dixit and takes away the things i don't like so yeah. that's why it's coming in at, at my seven even after just a few plays uh and one wow. that now i yeah i don't know if i need to functionally own it officially own it whatever i need to do I yeah need and <laughs> I, I i will say at this point that we actually have a direct crossover Whoa! here Oh, Nironauts is my number seven. And I should clarify that when we say we functionally own this game, what I mean is I have tons of Dixit cards. We've got lots of Dixit cards. Yep. And we have code names, which if you've played code names, it's got tons of word cards in it. That's all you need to play in Nironauts is lots of those picture cards and lots of those word cards. And then, you know, maybe a way to vote, which we just use the Dixit right. ones. Um, and yeah, so I'm so glad I tried this it was like oh we have the stuff to try we might as well try it and see <laughs> yeah. my wife really likes these types of games because it really has now given me an option in that space that's so accessible it pushes it into that like just one category of like man groups that maybe i wouldn't have would have been a little hesitant to pull out dixit or one of these mm -hmm. other ones and that i would this is perfect and it, it like is is kind of a can't miss experience. Like it yeah. just is so easy to play. It's more accessible. Still than gets Dixit. all the fun with the getting to look at the pictures and think. It's less getting in someone's head. Um, though there's still a little bit of that because you're trying to think like, would somebody have put this in, or yeah. is this the random one? Right. Um, I also love this is actually something I think is underrated in how much it's used in party games, is this idea of having like a bot player. Because that's basically what it is. It's like this, yeah. you know, the deck. And it, we, it gets this personality of like, oh, the deck put in a perfect card. I know we've used this before a long time ago in uh, Apples to Apples. Like if you don't have as many players, it's like, well, let's just have the dummy player that just throws Throw in a, a card random in. card. And it can be really And funny, I think yeah. it really work is kind of a cool thing because one, sometimes it's just very funny because you get an yeah. option that's like that <laughs> clearly like doesn't yeah. fit. But two, sometimes it'll get a really good one. And especially in Onironauts, <laughs> yeah. that's a very funny moment when we're all talking like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that was the random, that was one. The random one. Like yeah. that, I wasn't even considering that. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a really kind of fun dynamic. Um, and I agree, I haven't played it much, but I've learned more and more about myself that the parts I like about Dixit-like games mm -hmm. are less the coming up with my own clue and more the thinking yeah. through looking at options getting this and so this cuts straight to that with yeah. the the word cards providing the clues um, i think an, i think another thing it does that i love and there's actually another game that we may or may not discuss later has this as well is rather than looking at the cards and thinking trying to figure out like you do in dixit what's the best of these like wait because everyone's trying to put ones that match and which one is the the best one for it or the one the person put this one flips it to where now you're thinking 
you're you're trying to make an argument for each one of why maybe it could. Yeah. You know, like it's not the best, but but like okay. But like could, someone with a bad hand, like they maybe would have saw this right, and put this yeah, maybe in. They, but like, can I make some justification for why that could in some way? And that flip, I think is, I enjoy that a lot more. Yeah. That's a really fun uh, mental exercise for me. So yeah, there you go. Uh, nice. Double, double crossover endorsement at seven. For, Very for nice. Nuts. Awesome. Well, we're going to have another crossover, Ryan, coming in here at six. Uh, you talked about this one earlier and, um, Again, delivers uh, such a great laughing experience. And I agree with all of your modifications that you mentioned. And this goes to Telestrations. Um, I love Telestrations, especially when you aren't using those simple cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I seriously, with Telestrations, like, I, I even go a little looser than Ryan. I feel like of I'm just I almost just don't even want to draw a card. I mean, I, I what I want to do is you can get a card and if you want to use it as a prompt yeah, cool. Otherwise, what just write ever what just do whatever the heck yeah. you want and let's just have a grand old time. Oh man, I you know you you've kind of covered much of what I was going to say, but it's I mean I'm just thinking of even when we played it at a we had a group at at your place uh, I don't know if this was last year or something a big you know it was like a we we're having a small oh, I group I think I forgot that you were there I for was there that for one. that and you had uh, two of your uh, two of your buddies that we've played uh, board games with for a long time uh, yeah. were right next to each other in the you know passing and it was so funny like yeah you, i mean one funny in the drawing phase because you hear people's reactions as they're like what in the world is going on here but then the reveal is just like it just is so like we had so a group that funny. group we yeah. had it was definitely the full 12 there may yeah, have even been more had, than that yeah that i can't remember um that were like you know teaming up or something i don't remember yeah but it was a big, like big, big group, and I swear. I, and then when you have that many people, that means you've got twelve booklets to go through. And you know when you get the get once you start laughing. <laughs> once you, yeah, it's, it is a game. Once you start laughing, you and just so you're go. going through all these. I swear, we had twelve people in <laughs> tears, <laughs> like to the point where we're like almost unable to keep going, yeah. and like I'm like having to like take myself out and try to stop laughing so I don't like hurt my. <laughs> Oh, which is like, oh my gosh, is there, a, for me, is there a better party experience than that? Like, yeah, the more we talked about it, the more I'm like, man, maybe I should have put Telestrations a little higher on my list. Um, cause it really, I mean, the, the when it, ceiling, it at its peak, that ceiling, it is, it is truly we yeah, one of the best party experiences. So, uh, but yeah, it's gonna, uh, I, I think the wrestling with just the, that you have to adjust some stuff maybe is why it drops a little bit, but number six, uh, pretty high Telestrations. Nice. My number six, I'm quite certain, is not on Daniel's list. Um, but the more I was doing my rankings, oh, rankings, I was like, I, I <laughs> really like this game, okay. and I still really enjoy this system. I and this is, is Code Names. Oh, okay. I was thinking of a different one. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Code Names. You know, it just takes the concept of can I connect as many cards as possible with a clue to help my team guess them mm -hmm. and executes it in such a brilliant way with this shared grid where some of the words are belonging to the other team. And so you're skirting this balance of, you know, which words can I connect? How many can I connect? Cause the more I can connect with one clue, like that's more efficient. We might, you know, it's a race to get all your clues guessed. But you don't want to like get close to where your team might guess one of the other team's clues, or even worse, there's the one assassin that if you guess the assassin word, you're eliminated. Yeah, you just lose. Mm -hmm. um, and that system is just so brilliant. And I really enjoy being the clue giver. I also enjoy you know playing on the other side of it. Um, and you know it was one that we played a ton when we first got it. I've played more code names duet like more recently. My wife and I play the two player cooperative version. Yeah. Um, which gives a lot of the same feel, but we had the opportunity to play just normal code names not that long ago, and I was just reminded of like, man, this it does work really well and has kind of this nice team dynamic. There's a little bit of downtime, and that would be you know some people such as Daniel's uh, some main people complaint. some people might say don't I mean, say my I can complaints see for me. I I'll can, verbalize I them myself. <laughs> yes, I, I like to just make sure Daniel has nothing left to say by the time he gets <laughs> I've to his. Noticed. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's it's a great classic game um, and one that I still really enjoy. I, I enjoy. It's kind of got that push your luck thing of like, how much do I try for? How conservatively mm-hmm. do I play? Um, and so yeah, I, I think it's kind of a modern classic in terms of party game design. It is very funny that it's de- designed by the same designer that designed games like Mage Knight and Through the Ages. You know, that some of these wild. just massive strategy games. And yeah. then here he takes a little break from that and has some idea and whips it up. And, you know, I, I don't know that we've seen Vlada since ever since the big <laughs> he's code name. Living, he's just retired. I think he that. just like was like, yep, I made it. <laughs> I'm done. So, yeah. uh, which is a shame. He's a really good designer. But yeah, that is a shame. Yeah, uh, I uh, so code names shocker did not make my list. Um, yeah, I. I can have fun playing a game of code names. Uh, Ryan mentioned uh, one thing. I mean, for me, the a party game, it's all about like the group experience that it creates. And for me, code names, I just have had too many times where we're just sitting there in silence waiting for a clue to be mm-hmm. given. And so there's that, and that's not fun. Um, I don't love that you can potentially... I mean, I understand the fun of the assassin, but you could have a game that just ends right away. Um, which you could play again and whatnot, but it's funny when it happens. Yeah, well, funny or someone feels horrible. Like, <laughs> yeah, I guess it depends who you, on depends who depends triggers who you it. Have. Um, so yeah, and and I I agree. I like the the connecting the words. I think for me, it's just like the game leans much more towards the Thinky. winning and losing side yeah. of the scale than the we're just here to have a a fun group. Uh, yeah, experience. I agree with that. Um, and it just doesn't give me quite enough on the like, I'm cool with that. Like, and there's other games I'll even be talking about later that do lean that way, but still needs to give me just a little bit more of that, that group excitement. But yeah. I know tons of people who love code names. I still own code names because it, it, you know what it is. It's just, there are situations. And it's where, essentially an expansion for code names duet because all the cards can be mixed together. So. Very true. Um, yeah, I think it is a bit group dependent. You know, to your point, my best when I think of my best games of code names, it's with a group that like while the clue givers are thinking, there's just talking and banter yeah. and like it's just a fun social Not an introductory game, maybe to people you don't know as well or something yeah, like that. Yeah, because if you're yeah. sitting there in silence, yeah, that's not the yeah. ideal dynamic. Maybe that's on me. Yeah, yeah. it's probably your fault. Yeah. Okay. Um, top five. Top five. Okay, number five. Uh, it almost feels like a uh, injustice to have it on this list um, with only one play under my belt. But sometimes, Ryan, you can just see the writing on the wall that a game is a staple, fantastic for the collection, and going to stay long term. And this is going to go to Ready Set Bet. Wow. Um, I know. I. I really was resting. I was like, can I really put it at number five? Because I just got this this last month, played it once uh, with my wife's family. Um, I know Ryan was a, got it before me. Um, it is such, I mean, again, talking about I want that group party experience. I mean, this delivers that on such a fun way where I was playing, you know, as the the house and, and you know, so I'm moving the horses. And I loved that. That was so yeah. fun to be calling out what's happening and moving. I was totally cool that I wasn't even in the actual, you know, betting of the game, but man, you just feel the energy at the table as people are making bets and cheering on horses and, and everything. And it just, uh, yeah, comes to just creates such a fun, fun experience. And so, um, I don't even have too much more to say about it in that of, I've played it once. Yeah. It was a blast. And I, uh, it's it one that creates a social my- dynamic around the table that isn't really like most of the other party games. Cause it's real time betting and like the excitement yeah. of this race of how is it going to unfold? And- yeah. It's honestly a game. I was thinking about this. We're sacked. We're actually just this morning talking with our small group about, we got to play this game because it, it's, in some ways feels like a really kind of almost like just one of like one of those games that I would early on consider introducing to people. Cause uh, it just, I think bonds people together in this shared mm-hmm. experience so well. And there's not like a lot of individual pressure on like, you know, any one yeah. person, you're just all kind of in this shared thing, watching a horse race happen. Yeah. There's got- a little bit more going on. Like it's true. It's true. With understanding all the bets, there's the prop bets and the exotic bets, and then you start getting those VIP cards that have. Yeah, different. that's a good point. Um, but I agree. Like even people that 
like you start explaining that and they're going to be like a little bit like, oh, is this a little bit too much? I think once they get into it and, yeah. and you know, the person running the game, which that I've been in a similar situation, can handle all the payouts of like, yep. you know, be prepared to do a lot of multiplication of, yeah. you know, all the different payouts. Um, yeah. But I agree. I've had it work really well, even with people who, you know, aren't drawn to more complex games. And it has the... I mean, built into the game, it's just a great system for creating exciting moments, which Mm -hmm. uh, for a horse racing game that you're betting on horses, that is awesome. And so uh, I just think it was so well designed and uh, is a party game that I know and I've already got a lot of different situations that I'm excited to bring it into. Even trying to imagine if if you, you, you would probably just have to buy a bunch of the game which isn't ideal but i was trying to think if you could have like a full room you know, i literally people. just saw because tom uh, vassal over at the dice tower this is like his favorite game right now. yeah um and they i think are at their like dice tower west convention and so obviously people are wanting to play this game with him and i think they had a full room where each table had a betting thing oh my but gosh. tom's running the horse race on like the overhead the, yeah the overhead for that's every exactly game what in I the was, room that's exactly what i was picturing um oh yeah i mean gosh. you totally could and i mean it probably wouldn't be that hard to just you know find a way to print off more the, like proxy the components so you're yeah, not like buying completely to, new right? games but yeah interesting, it's interesting. there you go maybe that that that's what we'll have to do five. someday games that could be <laughs> expanded to really big groups big group like, yeah. yeah yeah nice uh my number five is gonna place us back in uh dixit like land the games that use these cool illustrated cards and this is one that i think kind of surprised us like caught us off guard like i don't think mm-hmm. i almost didn't put it like on my wish list because it was like is it really but then it was like oh it looks like a nice twist and the cards actually are dixit branded like you can uh, Mix them directly. This is Stella, Dixit Universe. It's the, uh, I don't know if they're punning other Dixit Universe. Stella. Dixit Universe games. They, I think they want to emphasize that, like, hey, that if you buy this, this game, is, like, yeah. it's cross compatible. Uh, that's a good point, actually. Um, Stella adds a little bit of a layer of complexity on top of kind of this formula, but everything about what it adds, I think, facilitates a really cool experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you have this grid of 15 cards. So instead of players having their own cards, there's just the same 15 that everybody's looking at. And just like in Oniranauts, you're going to reveal a word card. That's the clue for that round. And now everybody on their little dry erase board that maps to those 15 cards is going to put an X on everyone they think could match to that clue. And specifically, everyone you think someone else is going to match to that clue. Because ultimately, you want to spark, is what they call it in the game with people, where so you fun. both put the same. And yeah, if you're the only two that put it, you super spark we and get extra points. You. Which, that in and of itself, we've talked about. Great social Fantastic. dynamic. You get high fives around the yeah. table. Um, but it's this interesting push your luck of you want to put a lot down because that's more opportunities to spark, more points to get. Mm-hmm. But if you're the one that puts the most, you're then considered in the dark which means that unless you get them all right you're going to essentially get like half points it's, mm-hmm. it's a little bit less um and so you end up everybody walks those in and then we go around the table and everybody picks one of theirs to point out and you want to pick what's the one i'm most confident on and you see you know who sparked with me we all get points for it then the next person pick ones picks one and we keep going but if ever you do one that isn't sparking with anybody you are out of the round you can still cause sparks but you can no longer get any points and it is such a just fun dynamic in that round Mm -hmm. of kind of guessing not just which ones do i think other will do but which is the one i'm most confident on because i don't want to drop out of the round Mm -hmm. um and we've had very funny moments where you know somebody with their most confident one out of the gate i think it might have been you daniel (laughs) most confident out of the gate I remember that. Yeah, like the very first one out of the gate. This is the most confident <laughs> nobody has it. And so then you can't score any points. Yeah, um, that's, that's But rough. it's got kind of that shoot the moon thing of even when you're in the dark, you're like, ooh, there's you a can chance. Pull it off. And yep. we've seen it happen. And then you end up being the highest scoring one in the round because you got them all. Yep. Um, and you do that four times. And it is just a brilliant twist on the... F- I mean, like we said, like we like this core system. And it's like, how can you do more twists on it? But some of these twists just really have justified being their own yeah. thing, at least for us. It feels very different. Um, and so we've had a lot of fun with it. It's very, it does have that competitive feel of like, 
I mean, it, you can really play this game in a play to win mindset of yeah. like I'm really trying. The game works well that way. Um, but it's also, you could just be having a casual good old time and, you know, having fun and looking at the pictures. Right. Um, so very glad to have this one in my collection. Uh, it, if there's one kind of knock on it, it's that it caps at six. Mm -hmm. Now in the context of my collection, it's actually kind of nice because Dix, it's better with more people. Or yeah, so if you have six or less, and if Stella, I have six, yeah, like Stella more, like Dixit. works well even with like four, yeah. which I would not pull out those other games. Right. With. You're not so much in party game territory at that. Right. Um, but yeah, really good one. It's one that if if you're like I was and kind of overlooking it because it's like, I've got Dixit, I like it, I don't really need this other, yeah. you know, it may be worth a try because we've, yeah. we've really enjoyed it. Well, I'm going to reiterate everything you just said, Ryan, because uh, my number four is Stella as well. And we uh, to not to belabor the point, I, last thing I'll say is uh, it's so fantastic that also getting Stella, you know, when, when we love Dixit already, to know that getting Stella, oh, not only are we getting this totally new experience, but there's just more cards for Dixit. Like we're we expanding both we're, games. We're expanding <laughs> both games. So it's just so obvious and and yeah. you know maybe that was even the initial even just little incentive to get it and then we realized oh wow this game is really fun well, there's a lot of people that keep buying just the dixit expansions yeah like they just have cards well buy this next just buy this yeah, yeah if you're gonna buy another expansion like this is literally like a big expansion yeah. that also has a new way to play yeah and i totally agree that the competitive element um like yeah yeah i do feel it like you're you're trying you know you're playing to win and 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 that's fun, but it's not at the expense of fun exactly. group moments. Because like, there's other there's, party games where if you have people in the group that are focusing on nothing but the win condition, it yeah. actually ruins or Detracts makes the experience worse. And this Whereas, isn't the case. Yeah, because you've got, you've got super sparks. You've got, like you mentioned, someone thinking they're <laughs> coming in with their... Like, that whole witch... I mean, that is just a brilliant design. The whole which of my guesses do I lead with? Yeah. That, I, that just felt so fresh. That was a really cool yeah, and just the way dynamic of as yeah. you go around the table and you're getting sparks and you're getting people yeah. commenting on and the fact that the person I can't who's believe in, you didn't put this one the person who's in the dark obviously has more guesses than everyone else but could get all of them from a shared yeah that just feels so cool so yeah I Stella just got it a week ago as a very late Christmas gift shout out to yes and you uh, played it actually a good number of times probably. Four or five yep. times with yeah, and us, my yeah. wife loves this one. I I'm trying to remember on her uh, top games if this was. I want to say this might have been of the Dixie Universe, the top one for her. So that is why it is my number four. Nice. Well, Daniel, we flipped our fours and fives because oh. my number four <laughs> is ready. You just said you just played it more than me. Uh, yes, I have played it more than you. Um, and I went through a similar thing of like, this is very new. Like, is, do I feel like it's this yeah. high for me? I think it's a combination of one. I've had really good games with it. We've had the opportunity to play it kind of with the same group a couple of times. So people kind of like know it a little better. Mm -hmm. Um, and it is just a very different experience than a lot of party games I very have. And the fact that it can go to nine players. Now the ninth player is you being the house that's running it, mm -hmm. um, is a really nice play count. It feels weird putting it on the list when I know that most likely I'm almost always going to be playing that house mm -hmm. role. And I actually played it. So we, the last time we played it, we used the app. So you can get the app and have the app run it. And that allowed me to be in the game. Okay, and I was so you betting. did try the app. And I did try it. And the verdict of it is from my perspective, I was like, that was very fun. But honestly, I think I had even more fun running it. <laughs> yeah. Like just the fun of I rolling like the dice and doing it, and, you know, keeping the energy of yeah. like the You're announcing what's happening. controlling the energy of the game. Yeah, yeah, which is the person who's bringing the game to the table. You know, we always are the ones that are wanting to create a really good environment. Yeah. Being in that role lets me really control it and yeah. like get it. But then everybody else also was like, yeah, we think we liked it better when you were two. It was just a little bit more dynamic. Well, that's a good thing real... they didn't. Yeah, yeah. Actually, this was way better. Than <laughs> this was way better, right? Yeah. You were awful. <laughs> the physical dice hitting nice. the table and just the yeah. pacing of it. Um, right. You know, it's one thing to have an app telling you a seven was rolled, an 11 was rolled, and another to see it hitting the table. And yeah, because like, I haven't used the app. Is there? There's obviously, I'm guessing, no like commentary. I mean, it's just stating what's... 
Oh, so it okay. is actually it actually is very well done. Okay, but the commentary is obviously all these very pre-packaged sure. sound clips that it's like when you're playing do Madden, a different time. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All the you start to be like, oh, we've heard that one before. Yep, I've heard that one before. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I will say it was very well done, and I think for some groups that'll be ideal because there's going to be some groups that don't have someone who wants to be in that role yeah. and enjoys it. It's good but to have that obviously, option. someone like Tom Vassell, that's how he enjoys this game. He wants to be the guy running it. Um, and so it does feel weird because it's like, I'm actually not playing the game, if you think I about know. it. I, don't I know can't how to score win it or, in my app. I can't win or lose. <laughs> I'm literally just like the facilitator. But at the same time, when in party games, there's other party games we've talked about, ransom notes or telestrations that we're not doing any scoring. It's more, mm. it's all just about facilitating this experience. And Ruddy Set Bet does that really, really well with this yeah. real-time horse race, and I have a lot of fun uh, running it. So it it jumps up to my number four. Very nice. Um, I think it's the newest one to kind of get get that high on the list. Ryan, I'm going to make the bold prediction that our top three are the exact same in the exact in same in the exact order. same order. I'm going to make that guess. I don't know if I'm right. We'll wow. see. Um, I my, think you're right that they're the same three. My number. No, well, yeah, I'm pretty sure about that. My number three. Um, is one that uh, you got at Christmas. And I think we were both shocked at how great it went. And this is going to go to so clover, um, man. And so it, th- this game, you know, you've got these clover leaves of, uh, with where kind of, you've got these four cards filled with words. And on each side of the clover leaf, you're trying to give a clue. You're trying to, everyone's writing a word that connects the two words that are on that side of the clover leaf. Um, and then when it, you basically, so it's a cooperative game. And then, so when it gets to the kind of reveal stage, you, uh, take your cards and you shuffle in a random one. So there's five cards that are splayed out and, and then the re- everyone else is trying to guess which were the four cards to match and like put collaborate a, together, yeah, collaborate, as a team work together to, to place them on there. And Every this part, this game has multiple stages. Obviously, there's the initial clue giving stage, which I would say if there's a part that people could potentially not like, it would be that if you don't like the pressure of coming up with because sometimes it's hard to connect two words. Yeah. I love that. It's a really fun uh it gives you what you like about code names without the things. It you does, like. yeah, it does. And and just having two like I'm just connecting two words. Yeah. But with only one word. And what's the best way to connect? And the them? best way to connect them. So that's really fun. But the thing that I think shocked us was the reveal is so funny. Like it is so yeah. fun and funny and the amount of laughter that we have because the rest of the group is like, you know, you're basically trying to get in the mind of the person of, okay, well, would they say, but maybe, maybe they're saying this. So you're like talking for the person kind mm-hmm. of. So as the clue, one, as the clue giver, you're sitting there in silence, but it's hilarious. Like you're, you're like biting, I'm biting my lip because I'm trying not to give any reaction mm-hmm. to like clue in what they're, but it's just so funny. And I find the collaborative elements great. It's challenging it, and it, it's exciting when you get it. Um, and so, you know, the scoring is whatever. I don't even really care what the score is at the end of the game, but man, uh, just a ton of fun um, coming up with those those clues and and then the group dynamic of going around and guessing this one has just delivered every time it is yep. so consistent it's like just one uh but i but i but i per- it's honestly similar to just one but i love it way more um and yep. so that's why it comes in here at my number three very nice well you are right so far because oh, yes. my number I was scared three you were holding back there. <laughs> is so clever. Nice. Um, yeah, I think we like it for a lot of the same reasons. I will say it is group dependent. Like when we're talking about how funny it is and how, you know, yeah. that dynamic, I think we have played in the ideal scenario of when we're playing with our close family that we're all really close yeah. and there's we need banter. To, and we need to go find some people that we hate. And yeah, we should have done that we'll before we it reviewed out. it, just like played <laughs> it with some strangers. Um, but when you have that right group, uh, like the potential for that just really rises of just mm-hmm. how funny it is. Um, yeah, it's got the, f- 
like it's an interesting puzzle. Like it's got some meat to it, you know, totally. for people that want to be thinking a little bit yeah. more or whatever. But then it's still so casual because everybody's just like, mm-hmm. oh, maybe we'll try it this way. And the fact that it adds in that fifth card that the person didn't know these words. Well, were you talked be about that play. earlier, the random card getting put in, right? With yeah, uh, other exactly. games. Like we love that element and it creates because sometimes it's the same thing. We'll look at a card and be like. That was the random card. Yeah, and like, like both, both sides match fit with this. so well. Yeah, so yeah. that's a that's a really fun. fun yeah, thing. I guess also shout out to the English language for being so shout robust. Out. Yeah, that English language. If if, yeah, there's a lot of party games that like only work language? because the English language is so kind of weird. Like with lots <laughs> of words that like mean the same word can mean different things. Yeah. Like that makes these games thrive, honestly. Um, Man. So yeah, it's great. Shout it, out. it caps at six again, which it's always a little sad when party games cap at six. It's true. Um, there's not really a reason you couldn't buy a second set and like play with more other than there's going to be a lot of people trying to get around this little clover to collaborate on it. Yeah, um, that would probably be the only thing you'd run into is just some people yeah. might kind of just sit back and not collaborate as much if there's too many people. But I mean, you could even have say seven people and just like only six people do clovers or like two people mm-hmm. work on one together. But once you get to the collaboration stage, the it's, other person can, you can have like, as many people as you, you want. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We've talked about people in our life that like can't walk by a party game and not like, uh, like guess for the other team or do something like that. <laughs> yeah. This is a game where that actually <laughs> it's works a great well. game. For you can just come in and start kind of helping <laughs> yeah, out. So. That is true. There you go. We'll, um, yeah, we'll rank that list. Top 10 the, games for people like that. Yeah, very specific <laughs> list we make here on the show. <laughs> the trajectory for this game, yeah, has just been like every time we get it to the table, it has just gone up and up and up. up. Um, so, yeah. yeah. And we and we so reviewed this game. So, you know, check we did. It out. It's know. probably linked right here. But you're not going to want to click on that because you want to see our top yeah, two. So exactly. Don't you, do dare touch the, don't you dare touch that card, you sick freak. Um, okay. Uh, coming into my number two um, and also Ryan's number two. I'm just guessing. Mm-hmm. Bold, bold um, prediction. This is definitely leans towards the... Uh, um, and actually, I would say probably even the top two both uh, have an emphasis on trying to win. I mean, you're trying, yeah. I would say in both of these, you're, you, you care about winning this one, probably the most, uh, um, and this is going to go to decrypto. Um, this one, you're in two teams. You got this kind of, uh, um, I don't know. Uh, what would you call that in the middle? Uh, the like sheet, a little barrier a that you barrier, slot four barrier, cards barrier, into. You slot four cards. So each side has kind of four cards that are assigned numbers one, two, three, and four. Um, and I find this game's really hard to teach, actually. I know. It's, I, I it's, like that in these ones that we think we're all the same, you're the first one, so you're stuck explaining it. I know. So, just so, and smile. Yeah, we, we made a review. Just go watch it and then come back. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, so in it, you're in these two teams, and you're, one person on your team draws a card with a three-digit code, and the three digits match the words in front of you. And so you have to write uh, three clues to try to get them to guess those three words in the order. Um, and so pretty <coughs> simple, pretty simple thing to do, like starting out. But the the whole catch is there's the other team is also hearing your clues and writing those words down. And the reason that's important is because not only does each team have a clue giver that's trying to get your own, you're trying to get your own team to guess the three words and if your team misses you uh have a miscommunication token which one of the ways you can lose is by getting two of those but the other team has a chance to intercept where essentially after the first round not only does your own team guess the code for the three words that you're seeing but the other team tries to guess the three the code now obviously they don't see the words but they're going to have a running list of the clues. They're like we, they've all, they've done. These are the clues they've done for number three. Yeah. Like, would this one maybe also fit with those? And so, yeah. And so, th- that is such a fascinating twist because now, as the clue giver, I'm trying to give clues that still obviously direct my team to the right words, but don't connect with previous clues that maybe throw the other team off, so that when they see my our running list of clues, they're like. They're, they're, you know, guessing the wrong code or maybe even try to point them to another one if you're really good. It is a strategic game in terms of it takes skill to yeah. to like be ready for that. I mean, this is this is not for the faint of heart in terms of 
Um, I'd say of all the party lists on the game, or, or sorry, all the party games on this list. <laughs> broke my uh, brain there. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the one that's hardest to just like recommend. Like this is the least accessible. You yeah. want a group that's going to pl- have the same group play it multiple times yeah, to kind of have it click. And they uh, that is okay with some pressure, likes coming up with different clues for the mm-hmm. same words um, and being on the clock sometimes with that. But this game, as the because you keep going and you keep going until someone either miscommunicates twice or intercepts twice. And so the clues just keep building and building. And as the game gets, the game has just a wonderful progression where you, you find you're like, how are we, st- how are we going another round? Yeah. And, and the excitement every round just gets more and more, uh, fun and exhilarating and, we it's like our family tradition now where every year we've got this core group of of kind of siblings and, and our spouses that play decrypto and it is one of my favorite uh things i look forward to uh because we have so many memorable games of this that have just gone so far and someone gives a you know your you see your teammate give a clue and you get it and you and it throws the other team off and everyone's mm-hmm. like yes we you know that was an incredible clue and oh it's just just a blast so uh but i'm gonna pause you know let ryan uh let ryan uh talk about decrypto maybe maybe yeah dang it dang him nailed it dang him knows me too well i know right that's actually impressive though because we don't collaborate on this i mean Uh, i did look at your list but uh oh i guess that makes sense uh (laughs) (laughs) no so we just happened to pick pick what what we presume are the exact same three unless there's a big shock here at the end uh, that would be a big shock. But Decrypto, we did just review it. It's very fresh in my my head. Um, yeah. you know, so I'd check that out if it sounds interesting to you. We really kind of break it down. Um, but yeah, if you can get over that hump of where you don't have the game fall apart right away, which it can, mm, it's kind it of can. A fragile yep. if some, you know, you don't have the group really playing it well. But if yep. you get past that, it is just like every round you go is a better and better experience. You're just yep like the escalation is beautiful um and i agree that like it does have that competitive element and the with the word play and the word play it is very different from other word games very like different. code names where usually it's like linking words together or trying to clue for something this is keep cluing for the same thing but in different but try to oh. not let the other team get on to you of yeah. what you know like which ones are related but here's what's tricky is like you might give a totally different clue like angle for a word which can throw a team off but if the team makes the connection yep. then, then like, they don't then they don't it. just have a general thing They've got the exact word, yep. and they're they like, are locked the only in. Way on, these they are locked in on you, and so I find that's just you feel that pressure when you know they've they yeah. got you. And I know this one has ascended the ranks of like board game geek. It's one of the top rated party games. And I remember when I looked into it, it was it was hard to tell what made it so good from like just watching yeah. a review or whatever. It was really only once we played it a little bit that it, you start to see why the system works so well. Um, so highly recommended if you got the right group to play it. Yeah. Um, but we think there's okay. a game better than Decrypto, I guess. There is a game better to Crypto, and I'll be honest, there might even be a, a bit of a gap. This this is for sure my favorite party game. It's it's one we've had for a long time, and it delivers probably one of the oldest yeah, party yeah, games. Yeah, one of the oldest, and I mean, I just absolutely love it. And this goes to Times Up Title Recall. Um. In this game, you're uh, you're in you know split up into into teams, and there's basically this deck of you randomize a deck of cards full of titles of books, movies, um, songs. Not now, at too. first, that would sound horrible to me because I do not, yeah. I'm not educated on lots of. In fact, Daniel's not educated. I'm just not End educated. Of statement. But but actually, in the at least the version we had, you know, for a long time growing up, my parents were the ones who actually would like know a lot of these mm-hmm. things. But the great thing is you don't have to like, in fact, I would argue it's almost more fun uh, when you don't actually know what the thing is uh, because the game's played over um, three rounds. And so the first round you shuffle this deck together and, uh, and when it's your team's turn, one, you use the clue giver, you draw a card and it starts out just like charades. Your, your catchphrase is what you mean. Catchphrase. Yes. Um, And you're, so you're, 
just talking, trying to give clues, trying to get them to guess the thing. You can use actions, whatever. And whenever you get it, you claim the card um, and, and whatnot. And so you're going to keep going around until all the cards um, get claimed. And you have 30 seconds as, or 40 seconds. To, as, as um, to, to, as as to get as many as you can get. Time's up, goes to the next person. Um, so you do all that. So you're claiming cards, you score it at the end of the round. That's all great. But then you take all those cards. So everyone see, heard all the answers. You shuffle that same deck back together and you play a second round. But now in this round, you you can only say a one word clue. Um, and then the rest has to be just action. And they and only like. get one guess. Um, yes. But, and they yeah. only get one guess. You can skip now at that yeah. in that round. Um, but that's just it's such a fun progression because it's a game of building upon the funny moments that have happened so there's so many times where there will be like a memorable clue for whatever reason in the first Mm -hmm. round maybe someone misreads it and makes a a, you know a wrong they actually give a bad clue but it's memorable yeah or they just do an action or say something that's just hilarious or whatever it is to be memorable. So then you get to that second round where you say one word and you'll like say the thing, say the one word and point at the person or something like that. Yeah. And, and everyone will remember that, that funny moment. And so that's, so you're doing that the second round and claiming the words. Then you get to the third round and the third round, you can't say any words. It's only actions, but it's a game that not only easily perpetuates funny moments, but then it keeps pointing back to and building upon yeah. those funny moments, you know, or by the end of the game, you're just dying of laughter because we just have these ridiculous like connections and cl- clues and, and all that's that sort all of stuff. on top of a game that's still very skill competitive, try is, to get as yep. many cards. Yep. Um, and so, I mean, I think that's what we would say is like our favorite type of party game to crypto is maybe the exception because it's not you're not yeah there is a little bit of like laughing and funny to crypto but it's not really yeah. the focus right. but a game that can marry the very funny laugh out loud moments with the kind of thinky so clover is actually another very good example of that mm. like when those come together man is that a just a good party game yeah yeah so i have so many memories of this not everyone loves it um you know we've got we've got people uh, uh, in our, you know, kind of extended family and stuff who this is not their jam. Uh, but man is, I, I get so excited when we can play this game because yeah. it is every time it, it delivers every time. Like I, I, you really don't have a like bad game of times up. You are going to have funny moments. You're going to have memories. You're gonna, I mean, I think our, parents during covid played this like every weekend because yeah, they, they, had you know, they had their little quarantine times core, up group. Core, core group um but man uh just an incredible game that uh is the pinnacle of what a party game can be for me uh in delivering those memories there's some competitiveness but but still the team element i like that like i'm yeah. with someone you're and and even just the the togetherness of who you're playing with like uh, getting into it, you know, and, and whatnot and the back and forth of I'm clue giving your clue giving all that sort yeah. of stuff is just fantastic. So that is why is my number one. And it'll come as a huge shock that it is indeed also my number one times up title great recall, to though it was like a little hard to put this because you have to understand I've probably played this like twice in the last eight years. I mean, that sounds, says a lot that's your number And one. so like, part of me is like, man, this has not gotten to the table for yeah. me. And you as the viewer might go like, wow, is it really your favorite party game? Yeah, that's the what I'm The main thinking. reason it hasn't is my wife historically has not been a big fan of this game. Yeah. And, and she is a big fan of these other party games. And I almost always, if I'm playing a party game, am going it's to be, she's going to be in the group as well. Yeah. Um, so we played it a ton back as a family. You know, and that's a lot of where the bulk mm-hmm. of your plays come from as well. Yep. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, if you're just talking my tastes and me mm-hmm. playing the game, I think this is still my favorite party game. Um, I think specifically the title recall version, I know the original Time's Up is with people. I don't think that would work nearly as well because no. the problem is if you don't know the person, you yeah, like just you, can't, gonna... you won't get it. Exactly. Whereas if you don't know the name of the song, you just try to get the get, get them one the word at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so I think that works really well. I know another popular newer 
iteration of this formula because there's a lot of kind of some people even are familiar with this game just from like home brewing it mm -hmm. um but his monikers is kind of a new version of it that i know gets a lot of hype i played monikers once I think I still prefer Times Up Title Recall. Monikers leans a lot more into like pop culture references, which for some people they like that and it's very funny. Mm. I found that there were some references that were like, again, kind of more like the original Times Up. It's like if you don't know this reference, it's going to be hard. To this is going to be harder. It. It's just not going to make a lot of sense. Monikers does describe it on the cards. So they have this rule that like if you don't know what it is, you can actually like use some of what's on the card but that just kind of felt weird to me <laughs> i don't know like i would rather if you Isn't don't know what it job? is yeah <laughs> I, I i would rather if you don't know what it is like have to try to get the words and that works yeah. really well in title, title right. recall um but i know a lot of people really love monikers and it's ultimately 90 percent the same dna right. of what's happening uh but yeah that progression it's so good there's a little bit of the memory element which normally i hate memory in games i don't like like having yeah. to think I need to work hard to remember things. You do, yeah, you need to focus. But in this, it's just you mostly just have to pay attention. Like, you don't yeah. really have to be actively trying to memorize as much as, like, okay, I'm on other people's turns, I'm hearing the ones that have been won because they are going to come up again. Yep. Um, it also, like, if there's a really hard one, which occasionally there are some that are just really, really difficult, um, it has the advantage of, like, eventually people will have seen it as the clue giver. Yeah. And then they'll be the guesser. So you'll eventually get it because somebody's yeah. like, I know which one. <laughs> you know, yeah. we'll have these funny yeah. moments where your clue giver looks up with this look of panic of they don't know what to do. And then the person just guesses just it because they're like, it, I like, know which one, one you would be looking yeah. at for that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, again, it's a funny moment. It facilitates yeah. a lot of that. Um, it works with a very wide variety. Like, this game works great with four people in fact i think that's how my parents were playing it through quarantine was just four of them and like yeah, you just are back, back and, and forth because you're basically playing in pairs mm -hmm. but we've played up to 12 people and it yep. works really well so huge yeah. flexibility um yeah, yeah. And it's fun and, and when it's not your turn it's so fun to watch the people it's go. fun to watch and you are incentivized, incentivized. Yeah. to pay attention if you want to be better. doing well in the game yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it it actively uh works against people who want to like get on their phones when it's not their turn or whatever. Yeah. Um so good stuff. And that brings us to the end of our list where Dangle and I, I guess, have at least defined the definitive top three board games define of all time. Define the definitive. We, we uh yes. <laughs> what a, good use of this words, is a little right? redundant. <laughs> the definitive top three that we agreed on. And actually top three. We were flipped on our four and five. So we had the same top five. Yeah. yeah. We just the same person, Daniel? Yep. I don't think so. Like I said, I looked at your list. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but recommend checking any of these out. We've yeah. had a lot of fun memories with them. Maybe you can as well. We've got the links down in the description. But that wraps up our top party games of all time. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, that was uh, quite a fun list to put together. Ryan and I love us some good party games. And one of our top ones we mentioned was Decrypto. We just uh, released a review of that, getting into why that game, uh, the strategy and uh, team, man, there's just so much fun in it. I encourage you to check that out right there. Or there is another video suggested here for you. But either way, we will see you in the next one.